I've spoken to him like a couple times actually. He's really, really. Yeah, he's really cool. He's a fun dude. Is it okay if I? Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Is it six o'clock? It is six o'clock. These are these mics that don't move. Oh, uh, let me see if there's any extra light. I think our tech is is our tech around? My phone something bad. Oh, there you go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Is that enough light? Thank you. I'm just trying to make sure I don't spoil my voice because I have so much work. In a good way. In a good way. But I can't go home with a tired. Yeah, I can't go home with a tired voice out here. So hi, everybody. How are you? Yeah. Fantastic now. Sorry that we have to uh, fight the music. Um, but you know that's how it goes sometimes. So my name is Monica Rial. I am a voice actress. That's why I have this very strange voice that you hear before you. Um, or actually, that's probably how I become a voice actor is because I have this strange voice that you hear before you. Um, I have been acting since I was 12 years old. Like, I decided very early on, I want to be an actor. And at first, I wanted to be a movie star. And then I decided, maybe not. <laughs> it seems like a whole lot of work. You get a whole lot of money, but you also can't, like, go to the grocery store without somebody following you around and knowing who you are. I was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so I ended up doing a lot of theater. Um, I always thought that I was going to be one of those people that goes on to Broadway and does like professional uh, theater. And I got sidetracked by an audition for ABB Films. And I went and auditioned for this company and I absolutely loved it. I knew what anime was because my brother was a big anime fan. I just had no idea that they dubbed anime in Houston, Texas, and not LA. I was very blown away. So I went and auditioned, and a few months later, got the call to come in and do Walla with all actors, which is like all the little bits and stuff in the background. And then um, after that, like a month later, I got cast as my, as two leads right off the bat. And then I thought, oh, this is a cool little job. I want to be fun. And then here we are, 20 years later. I'm now, the one thing that you should know is that I'm not just an anime voice actor. I also do um, Western animation or prelay animation, as we call it. So I was on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> I was Jimmy. Jay Edwards. Huh? Jay, uh, Jay Edwards. Oh, yeah. Ah, and so I was in that. I also do a lot of video games. So I do a lot of video game work, both with um, adaptions of, of shows that come over, video games that come over from Japan and also uh, games here. That makes sense, stateside. Um, I also do commercial work. This is the stuff that is not as exciting. Nobody ever wants to hear about the commercial work. But you know why I can be an anime voice actor for a living? Because commercial. Because I do commercial work. Here's the trick. I can go in, like, um, I have a particularly heavy season this season because I have five shows that are returning. And that's not including the new shows that I'm in. So I might have a full day at Funimation, like bumping from, from room to room and doing voice to voice and working my butt off, right? I could go into a studio and go, great value, purified drinking water with flavor enhancing minerals. <laughs> and be like, can you read it one more time? Sure. Great value, purified drinking water with flavor enhancing minerals. Great, thank you. And then I get paid for more, I get paid more than that whole day of anime. <laughs> for those two seconds that I read that. And it's kind of ridiculous, right? Because of course the anime is so much more difficult. People don't tell you that. They think, oh, okay, well, I can do that. I've watched enough anime. And it's like, I call anime voice acting um, math acting because you have to think of so many things at one time. You can't just act, right? Because we have these little lip flaps. And so I'm always amazed at how many people think we change the lip flaps for the lines. It's actually the opposite. We adapt the lines to match the mouth, which means that not only are you thinking about your character, their voice, their interactions, like how they're relating to the characters around them, you're also worried about hitting all of those little bitty flaps, when to come in, when to pause, if you have a reaction in the middle of it, so that's why I call it math acting, because in your head you're adding all of those things up while still trying to be honest and true. So today, with this 
is about, though. This is about acting. I'm just going to teach you guys just a little bitty snippet as much as I can. Granted, that's a lot to teach, and it's kind of a hands-on thing. So I brought some scripts and stuff. So if any of you are feeling particularly, um... oh look, hey, everybody, oh, great. Well, then we'll have a great time. So what we'll do is like I'm going to go over some stuff, and then I'll have some scripts out, and we'll go over like a commercial script, and I'll give you some notes, and you can see kind of how it works and what's going on. But first of all, I'm gonna give you a basis of like acting in general. Now, do I have any actors out here? Do I have any guys that have done any theater or anything before? Okay, so there's a few of you guys. Do I have any singers? Do I have any singers? So she's like, hey, just care who can count. This counts. Uh, singing is also a good quality to have. I know we discussed that the other day in the panel with uh, Crispin and the others. So, acting. As a very basic, basic rule, is making believe, playing pretend, so well that other people believe you, right? So how do you do that? How do I play pretend in a way that is so incredibly honest and true that people believe what I'm saying? It's not easy. And this is the part where it gets tricky because there are many different techniques and there are many different strategies. There's the Meisner, Meisner technique. There's the Stanislavski method. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. That is what college is full of. <laughs> if you decide to go to school for acting, you will learn about all of those things. Right now, I'm just gonna talk to you about what it's like to act and react and how it's supposed to feel and what you're supposed to bring about within you. You can take that with what you will and learn your different techniques on your own. But basically acting, you wanna be as real as possible, right? It's all about truth, it's all about honesty. Here's the thing about voice acting in particular that's difficult, is that you can kind of fake it on stage, right? Because here's the thing, if I'm on stage, then I'm going to use my diaphragm, so everything is like bigger and back here, but I can like, if I'm doing Shakespeare, let's say, everything I do is going to be more dramatic so that the people that are five, thousand miles in the back <laughs> still see that I'm uh, so dramatic, right? So I don't necessarily have to feel those things because you can tell by my body language what's happening. I'm angry or I'm happy and lovely and graceful. You can't do that in film, right? So film, you can't lie as much as you would in theater. In film, though, you can still lie because then everything is just about Everything is about being real natural. Hey, how you doing today? It's good to see you. Oh, hi. How you been? Yeah, great. I mean, like, really weird, right? I feel weird doing it. That's what we do, though. Because I'm just there for, like, be real. Be real. I'm like, this is real for me. This is my personality. And I'm like, that's too big. Like, well, then you're asking me not to be real. No, be real. Okay, whatever. Uh, but the one thing about anime voice acting, or voice acting in particular, is that you cannot lie. There is something weird about this instrument right here that if I am telling you something that is not honest, you will be able to tell. Have any of you ever watched an anime and there's, let's say, a character that is fine, you know what I mean? Like you don't particularly hate the voice or anything, but for whatever reason, something with that character just doesn't sit well with you. You're like, I just don't like them as much as I love the other people, or the performance just feels a little bit off. And you subconsciously are picking up on that. You're picking up on their nervousness, on maybe they've had a bad day and there's some, there some text in their reads is coming out that way. So a lot of times when people are like, oh, I hated that performance, I'm like, makes me go back, who was that? Oh, that was the actor, yeah. So it's very, very strange in anime and commercial and stuff like that, you have to make sure that if you are acting, you have to believe it 100%. The hardest part, and we're gonna start with commercials. What's hard about commercials is that if you get a copy, we call it copy, any little script is called a copy. If you get copy from McDonald's and you are a vegetarian, <laughs> and you have to talk about how much you love the Big Mac and the juicy meat, oh. it's kind of hard if you absolutely hate the idea of eating meat, right? So I have a coach out in LA, Maurice Tobias, and she's fantastic. She taught me that the best thing to do is something that's called, um, I can't think of the word because I'm distracted by people talking behind. I 
ADHD too, y'all. So if you need to rein me in, rein me in. Um, it's, it's basically a switcheroo. So like, if I am a vegetarian and I'm trying to sell you on a Big Mac, I might switch that Big Mac with whatever is something that I truly love to eat. Let's say I'm a vegetarian that loves caramel frappuccinos. Well, all of a sudden, instead of talking about Big Mac and it being juicy and filling, I'm gonna think about my frappuccino and how icy and cold it is, but I'm going to use those words to sell you on that frappuccino. So it's very, very interesting to watch in practice because I did a workshop once where she had people come up and there was one girl that had a CVS pharmacy copy and she just wasn't selling it. Everybody's like, I don't understand what's going on. And then the coach, Maurice, is like, how do you feel about CVS? And she's like, I don't like it. <laughs> Every time I go up there, I get this like receipt that's like a million miles long and it's just it's annoying and I hate it. And she's like, okay, um, how do you feel about writing? Right, eh? They'll let you like bring back lipstick and stuff. She's like, okay, we'll switch out CVS with writing. And all of a sudden, we were all sold. We're like, oh, sweet, I want to go to CVS right now. <laughs> so it's crazy how that works. And you would think that your brain can play tricks on you like that, but it does. Okay, let's see. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, hi. I was like, are they going to respond? <laughs> Isn't it hard to put the emotion and like the, the when you're because you're behind a booth or when you're in your booth like recording studio, it's hard to get that same emotion that you would. So like if you're standing in an audience, like if I was to stand up and be like, "Let's talk one Dragon Ball Z," you could it, it, you could do it because you could do hand motions, you can uh, do body language, but it's hard to do that when you're standing behind a mic. You still, I tell you what, there still is a lot of physicality. The difference is knowing your placement. So like, he had a very good point. Like whenever you're acting stuff out in the booth, that doesn't mean that you have to stand there stoically, like, I am saying my lines right now. <laughs> the problem is, is when you're voice acting, you do have to stay within what's called on mic, right? You don't want to get too far off of it because then all of a sudden it starts to sound really boofy or whatever. It's hard because this isn't the greatest mic, so you guys are really getting the full effect. But what happens in the booth, usually you have an overhead hanging mic. So it's like that, and then I'm gonna sit. So we'll say I'm like this. So you want everything to be within this range. Like, a, imagine a circle around it, right? You can even kind of go to the side if it's an omnidirectional mic, which means it picks up sound from wherever. But everything has to stay in here. Now, I can just gesticulate, and I can, like, move as long as I stay in that area. Well, you have a filter, right? Like, yeah, there's a filter, too. Yeah, 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 that keeps it. It's a pop screen that keeps you, like, any time you have, like, a plosive P. Like, the only thing is after lunch, you can see everybody's lunch on the pop screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really gross. It's not all glamour, you guys. Um, so that's the thing is you have to stay within that area. You can't move that far. But that's why you'll see a lot of voice actors who are almost like in this kind of stance <laughs> under the mic because they're like moving around and everything, but they're still staying within that space. He's sitting there trying to fight the director. Like, Round one, fight. <laughs> Jason Liebert is one of my favorite actors. We've done a lot of stuff together, but he's hilarious because he is very physical. And I remember um, subdirecting for a show called Moonface, where he was yes. 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 And um, as I was subdirecting, he freaked me out because we got to a fight scene, and he watched it. And then when he went to do it, he was in a whisper room, which is like a little closet on wheels, right? It's a little recording studio, super tiny. And he started reacting and like jumping in the booth. And the whisper room started moving. <laughs> like every time, and my engineer and I are just like, do we stop him? Gosh, this take is so good. We're doing it. So we literally watched the booth kind of bang, 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 bang. Like, okay, that was great. Now we have to push the booth back. And every time, bang, bang, bang. That was like, this is hilarious. But yeah, so you can, you do have a lot of physicality and stuff that you can still do. Now I've got some commercial scripts up here. Commercials are difficult because they're like wide ranging, right? You're gonna have your PSAs, the ones where it's like, let me tell you about the dogs that are left out of cold and how awful it is, right? You're very serious, you've all seen the Mel Melissa Etheridge commercials where they're playing and it's like, oh, they're the worst. Um, and then you have the ones that are like for uh, theme parks where it's like, come on down this weekend to the theme park, Woo! <laughs> So it's kind of hard, and I think that that's why it's a really good like beginning activity for us to try, because that way you can kind of see the difference. Okay, so do I have any volunteers? Please don't make it a medicine commercial. I did see that hand back there first, since you raised your hand earlier. Come on in. Right there. 
Yes, you're right there in the gray. I'm sorry. I saw her. Or his name first. I can't tell. <laughs> All right, so let me. Uh, we're gonna have plenty of time for everybody, y'all. Don't worry, because I've got some scenes too. Now this is gonna be a little awkward because I don't have any like handheld mics, right? So I tell you what. Is it gonna be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Sorry, you guys. Usually we have cordless mics, so. But look at you! Thank you guys so much. Trust the leaves. This is awesome. All right, let's see. I'm gonna pick your commercial. What is your name, Zach? Uh, Donovan. Donovan. All right, Donovan. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to make a mistake like yesterday. Well, here's what we can do. Is I can come with the. Oh, this way. Oh, hey. Wow. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hello. All right, Donovan. Well, I'm going to give you. We're going to start off pretty easy. I'm going to give you a 7 Eleven spot. Okay? So, this first time, don't worry about acting it out if you'll just read it aloud, because unfortunately, I didn't bring a PowerPoint or anything for everybody else to see it. But if you'll just read the commercial aloud so everybody can hear what we're talking about. So, it's 2 in the morning, and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge and nothing in your cupboard. You don't even have a dog biscuit hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember that the three alarm fire you started the last time you tried using your stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's gotta be one right near you. There's, they have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 7-Eleven. Think of your own person. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Awesome! So how do you feel about 7-Eleven? Have you ever been to a 7-Eleven? I it's <coughs> kind of recommend it through my job. Oh, really? <laughs> what is your job? Well, the thing, well, not really recommend per se. It's just, I, um, I work with uh, truck drivers and stuff, and I help them unload stuff. Oh, so but, So before I go into work, I go to a 7-Eleven, and it's literally three in the morning and I can have to go in for like breakfast or whatever. So you see like the seedy side of some lemon. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, no, I see all sides of some lemon. Okay, well, that's good. So you're familiar? Yes. Okay, now how do you feel about cooking? Like are you a culinary chef or anything? <laughs> Says otherwise, uh, she, she, she believes I should be in food wars or something like that. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So you do like to cook? I, I do like. So to cook, this might be a little stressful for you because you obviously have never lit the kitchen on fire. No, I haven't. Okay. But I do, there are times I don't feel like it. So. Right. <laughs> and how do you feel about burgers and like the food that's served at 7-Eleven? Is it? It's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you three suggestions. Okay. The first suggestion I'm going to give you is that you take whatever food is listed in there and you switch it out your brain with whatever is your favorite food. And I don't mean just like your favorite food, but like your favorite effing food <laughs> in the world. But I want you to read the words that are on the page, okay? The second thing is, I want you to remember back in the days when you knew nothing about cooking, right? You didn't even know how to turn on a stove. Done. Okay? <laughs> and then the third thing I want you to think about is, you ever had one of those nights where you're hanging out with your friends, you're playing video games until like two or three o'clock in the morning, maybe you had a little to drink, maybe you had a little bit of, mm, whatever you gotta do, you had that? Okay, so imagine being hungry on one of those nights, and those other two things that I gave you, and try reading it again. Let's see it comes out. I know it's a lot to think about. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. I can just eat. Here we go. Oh, look, you got it. Oh, awesome. Great, great. <laughs> Perfect. Because I connect with this. Might feel better. About this. Yeah, whatever makes you comfortable. Get comfy, y'all. <sighs> so it's two in the morning, and you're sorry. There's nothing in the fridge, there's nothing in the cupboards. Not even, you don't even have a dog biscuit. You're thinking about cooking, but well, then you remember the three alarm fire you started trying to use the stove. Well, check out 7 Eleven. There's gotta be one near you. There's everything from taquitos to, to turkey sandwiches. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 
7 Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk in kitchen. Awesome. Now let me do this. Let me give you, let me see the script, okay? Because I didn't bring extra copies because I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to give you, okay, do you guys know what beats are? No? Okay. Well, so those of you that don't know, a beat is a pause, but it's not just a pause. It's a pause where you kind of change direction. So like a beat would be like, a pause is just as if I'm talking, and then all of a sudden I stop. We also call this a Shatnerism. We just kind of stop in the middle. A oh. beat would be if I'm like talking to you, Donovan, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you remember that thing? You know what I mean? There's a change. It's not just a pause, there's a change in thought. It's like your fluctuations in your voice, where it's parts where your voice goes up and down. Right. So certain things like, you 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 uh, announce you well, when you like say something like, your voice is going up like if you're starting a commercial or uh, a phrase like, like if you're about to say like it's over nine thousand <laughs> your voice goes up or whatever so it's just fluctuation. It's also so basically in acting we talk a lot about tactics right because your job is to get what you want your motivation. That's why anytime you see a, like they're joking about actors, they'll say, "What is my motivation? What do I want?" <laughs> And that's because that's what you have to ask yourself in the scene. Like, obviously, in this scene, what do you want? I want some food at 2 in the morning. Exactly! <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about commercials, is it's pretty easy to figure out what you want. <laughs> then it's just figuring out how to get what you want. And figuring out how to get what you want is what we call tactics, right? So you can try different tactics. Let's say, um, for example, anybody's seen Dragon Ball, right? When Zamasu comes around and Bulma's trying to flirt with him, that's a tactic. And then she gets snarky with him, that's a tactic. It's like, how many different ways am I going to try to get what I want? Those are all your tactics. So what you do is you break down your script. Let's start at the beginning. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're starting. That's pretty straightforward, right? You're just kind of laying down the story for your audience. On the next one, I want you to get even more and more frustrated. There's oh, something in the fridge. You know what I mean? Like, oh God, I don't even have a stinking dog biscuit, right? Really frustrated. And then I want you to have a beat, and I'm gonna mark it with a little thing. It looks like a backwards Z. And on that moment, after you go through the, the dog biscuit thing, I want you to have a moment and go, I remember that time I. I burned down the kitchen. And maybe even chuckle about it. Like, how do you feel? Like, if you burned down the kitchen, like, maybe in the past, it's kind of a fun memory. Like, oh, I burned down the kitchen once. And, awesome. <laughs> um, and then you're going to have another beat there. And that beat is, takes you from the storytelling part of the commercial into the, you know what? This is what you should do. Because this is what I do when I'm, up, when I'm hungry at 2 o'clock in the morning. And that's where you start the cell, right? And so the cell part is, check out. Now, on that part, I want you to pretend that you're just talking to your best friend. Like, yo, dude, you yeah. hungry? Let's go to some one. <laughs> and then, on the last part, maybe give it like, a little bit of a wink. <laughs> so that's going to be my direction for you. I've got you some little, some little beat marks. So let's try that and see. So those are the little beats there. So you'll have a little bit of a change of thought, like a change of direction. Same thing here. That's when you start your cell. Bless you. Bless you. All right. So it's two in the morning, and you're sorry. There's nothing in the fridge, nothing in car uh, covers, not even a dog biscuit hanging around. Think about cooking, but you then remember that three alarm fire you started the last time you tried to turn on the soup. Well then, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. <laughs> they got everything from tomatoes to turkey sandwiches. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7-Eleven, you know, just think of it as your own personal walking kitchen. See how much more natural that felt, right? You guys are like, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden you go from like, I am reading a script to, ah, you know what, you should go to 7-Eleven. And here's the thing that's weird about advertising is it switches, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes they want, go to 7-Eleven! And sometimes they want, you should go to 7-Eleven. It's really strange, but I think you did a brilliant job of making that real. Thank you, Donna. You can take that. I'm going to set your mic up here. You can set it up here. Okay. And then let's see who else. Oh, your hand went up first. I saw it. Come on up. Chase right there. Do 
one of the, you know how those like really old seven Hi. Where with the guy who was like in that really deep voice and he would just be like the, the, like the basketball thing was like dribble, dribble. He'd be like, that's like, no, I don't even remember yeah, that. Those, those are funny. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. How do you feel about cats? I like them, but I'm allergic to them. Oh, <laughs> this might be a good one for you then. <laughs> um, that was not, let's see. It's not true. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's not pleasant. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sneezing. This is a kind of weirdly written one, but I think okay. it's fun. So, <laughs> here's that. I'm gonna hand you this. What's your name, sweetheart? I'm Amber. Hi, Amber. Nice to meet you. Hi, y'all. So this is Amber. She's Hi. going to Hi, read us a, um, a spot about Diet Coke. Um, what's different about this spot is that this is one that would probably have a tagline on it. So you're not doing the set. You don't have to do that part. You're just Reading totally this. Reading that. So yeah, the first time they just read it straight. You don't have to worry about performance. Got it. When enjoying the unique taste found in Diet Coke at work, you should be careful never to release any inner feelings toward your boss, such as proclaiming, I am the goddess, you must worship me. This would undoubtedly start startle your boss and possibly leave you amongst the rank the ranks of the unemployed, thus leaving you in financial ruin, unable to purchase more Diet Coke. Awesome! Wow. I like that. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you here's there's a couple of different ways that this spot can go, right? Because we don't really know, like let's say we're the ad execs and we don't know, maybe we want it to be like this, maybe we want it to be like that. So on the first one, I'm gonna have you read it as um, somebody who's doing a presentation for like let's say where do you work? Um, with kids. Oh, okay, never mind that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you can't you you don't like <laughs> have like a beautiful presentation with kids. Right? I'm going to say, give me your best uh, flight attendant. Oh, yes. You I know what I mean? That. Kind of this voice. Let me yeah. teach you about the wings. Right? Got so it. let me hear what happens if you're doing this as if you're actually trying to teach them about the ways of the Diet Coke. <laughs> well, when enjoying the unique flavor found in Diet Coke at work, you should be careful never to release any, any inner feelings toward your boss, such as proclaiming, I am the goddess, you must worship me. This would undoubtedly startle your boss and possibly leave you among, among the ranks of the unemployed, thus leaving you in financial ruin and unable to purchase Diet Coke. Awesome. See, it kind of reminds me of like the Orbitz commercials, you know, where the girl's like, Orbitz, ding. So I'm going to have you try one more thing with this. And what I would like to do is when you have that line about being a goddess, I want you to switch from, I'm teaching you about Diet Coke, to, I am a god. I want you to actually be the person proclaiming to be the goddess. I can do that. And feel free to slow your roll a little bit. I know that these have got like run on sentences. That's something you have to. You have to deal with, with especially commercial copy, because the people who write it are not writers. They're just like, I have to get all of the words in, all of the information. So let's do the same thing. I love what you're doing. I'd say go even farther. Like maybe like you're talking to your the kiddos. Like yeah. I'm going to spell everything out for you. Got but then that one line, I'd love for you to actually be that diva. Got it. Let's hear what that sounds like. When enjoying the unique taste found in Diet Coke at work, you should be careful never to release any of your inner feelings toward your boss, such as proclaiming, I am the goddess, you must worship me. <laughs> this would undoubtedly startle your boss and probably leave you amongst the ranks of unemployed, thus leaving you in financial ruin and unable to purchase more Diet Coke. <laughs> The only thing that I would have done, just for because I'm I'm a little bit into humor and I'm very silly, is after you did the oh, I hope the goddess. So anyway, <laughs> but great job. But you guys are seeing how it works. Like you have to find the little things. You have to be a little creative. I'm gonna see. Let's see if we can get to a C now. Thank you, Amber. Everybody give Amber a hand. Yes, you're the queen. Is you're a actual, goddess. Is that an actual like Coke commercial? Like, was that an actual black Yeah, I pull all of these guys off of the internets and their actual spots and stuff. Because like, when you look, watch the Spanish channel. There's always like some lady like on there. She's like, ah, that is Coke. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, people hear you that. I don't know that we have. There is one. 
Okay, I'm gonna try, let's try one more of these because I always find this fascinating. Do I have anybody, and this is not to get really personal, so if you don't feel comfortable, please don't say anything. Do I have anybody who is an atheist? Do you mind reading a spot about Christ? Absolutely. This is why I find it, <laughs> this is why I find it really interesting, and here's a really big take on how this is, can be difficult sometimes, because sometimes you have to do things that you may not 100% be on board with. So this is actually a pretty serious take, right? So I would like for you, the atheist, to sell us on this commercial. <laughs> but I'm going to edit it a little bit because it's, it's kind of long, so give me just one second. Yeah, please don't Momoko it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no stories. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to cut this back part. But this is where it gets hard, right? So, like, it's one thing, you know, this is the best way to show you guys, like, hey, sometimes you get stuck with stuff that you're not comfortable with. So, on this one, basically, it's somebody talking about a concert. They're looking for other people to come do a concert, Youth for Christ concert, missionaries. But here's the hard part, is I need you to read this and not sound cynical. At all. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not going to give you a hard time. I know it's a sensitive topic, so I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it really is fascinating when you watch it happen. So you just read through it. Huh? I'm always the same. I am too, but it's okay. This is all about acting 101. We're going to teach you how not to act cynical. Slate. Slate. <laughs> oh, yeah, what is your name? Read it for the camera. Deception. Sean. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Shut up, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's been years. It'd be really bad if I didn't. All right, so just read through it for me. Oh, just read it out loud. Yeah, you can just read it out loud so everybody hears what's going on. Is your light hiding under a bush? Uh, remember, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Let your light shine at the Youth for Christ concert in support of our missionaries serving communities in El Salvador. We're looking for useful acts and people to serve on several committees working behind the scenes. Come share your time, talent, and treasure with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Good job of not sounding cynical. Yep. Uh, <laughs> now here's the thing. What is something that you feel passionately about? It could be anything. It could be comic books. It could be, you know, tequila, whatever. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> well, I, I won't even make you say it aloud. Think I can't because it's not an engine. It's what? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> take that thing, whatever it may be, and it's age inappropriateness, um, and, and make that, substitute that, so that that is what is giving you this power, and then that is giving you this wealth. And you want to share that with everybody, unless that makes it weird. <laughs> but you want to share that with everybody. So, Let's hear it again, and I want you to think about the thing that makes you. So instead of this being like a cell, I want you to convince me about this thing that you're passionate about. Does that make sense? Take all the time. I'm going to take more water. Hiding under a bush. Remember, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Let your light shine at the Youth for Christ concert in support of our missionaries serving communities in El Salvador. We're looking for musical acts and people to serve on several committees working behind the scenes. Come, share your time, talent, and treasure with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> I didn't figure I was going <laughs> But what I would like you to do is I love what you're doing. I want you to start off with that sharing of your passion. And then I want you to get excited. Because as you're talking to me, I'm getting excited. So I want you to start at that very calm level where you did. But maybe you get a little more thrilled about it. Maybe you're like, oh, wait, they get me. Let me talk some more about this. So that maybe by the end of it, it's a little bit more heightened, if that makes sense. Let's try one of those and just see. Because I really love the honesty that you were giving me. 
and the passion that was behind it. I just want to hear like, and you can look at me. I will totally sell. You will sell me. <laughs> and I will give you back what you need, if that makes sense. Cool? I'm ready. Is your light hiding under a bush? Remember, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Let your light shine at the Youth for Christ concert in support of our missionaries serving communities in El Salvador. We're looking for musical acts and people to serve on several committees working behind the scenes. Come, share your time, talent, and treasure with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. They want to find all of the acts to come to El Salvador, and the only way they're going to be able to do it is if you sell them on it. So good job. That was awesome. Thank you, so You are great. All right, let's see. I've got a couple of scenes. Well, before we start doing scenes, does anybody have any questions about anything? Now, I know I'm giving you a whole lot of information. I'm basically taking my 30 years of training and going, Hope this works in an hour. <laughs> so please, if you have questions, let me know. I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, what if you're, what if like, so, and not that I can't, but like, suppose you can like do stuff, but like you're not good at like, so, like, so you, you know like, have you ever seen like the guys who do like improv stuff <laughs> that, that can generate content quickly, but are not really good at like, uh, reading scripts and doing stuff on a script? Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Get the energy in your voice, and you can do voices, and you have good range, but you can't do much with a script, or you're not good at doing too much with a the script. There are totally different like ways to get around that. So he's asking, like, what happens? You know, you see the improv guys, and they're really quick on their feet, and they've got it. Like, what if you can do things, but maybe you aren't as talented at like reading, like cold reading, or you know, maybe you want to have the script in front of you to read. Um, a lot of times when you audition for stuff, you're doing these at home. So like the things that we're doing just now would be things that you would record at home and then slate, put your name on it, and send it off into the to the agency. So you're not doing any cold reading. Um, you actually have the script there to work with. And a lot of people that you work with, either in commercials or even in anime if it's available in video games, will give you scripts. Like if you say, hey, I'd really like some time to work on the script. They're gonna make you sign a crazy non-disclosure agreement, but they'll probably go, hey, you need some extra time with the script, here's a script that you can kind of look over and go, and it depends. Now, anime, that's not always the case because it comes so quickly. We don't even have time to share the script with anybody because it's like, you better get in there. Get in there, say the words, do it fast, like now. So that's the only time that it gets a little weird, but for things like commercials and movies and film and things like that, they will always give you the script ahead. The other thing is like with like commercials like 7-Eleven and like stuff like that, like does it help to actually so does it help to actually work in a store where like you actually have to put on that business kind of so I work in a Home Depot. Right. So I deal with customers every day. So if I have to sell something that's easy, I can easily put on the persona and it can certainly hard. help. So like if you work at Home Depot, it can help or it can hurt. So like let's say you get a Home Depot spot and you're like, sweet, I had a great day at Home Depot. I'm really stoked about Home Depot. Let me sell you some stuff. But if you had a bad day at work and you have to do a spot at Home Depot and you are you hate the depot today, it's gonna be really hard for you to sell the depot if deep down you're like, oh that customer pissed me off so bad. <laughs> so it can help either way. Look, well, like, what if you're able to keep that positive tone? Like suppose you can because like, I run into that every day where like, I'll have a bad day and they still totally hate the product. But I'll be like, yeah, this product works, it's awesome. And, like, if you can do it, yeah. more power to you. But I find that for me, if I'm not 100% happy with something, then it's gonna kind of come through in my ear. So that makes sense. You might not even be aware of it, but sometimes that happens. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, yeah. One question. You said you send in your tapes for is that just a sample script and then they choose who they want? That's a good question. Sometimes it's the actual script. So especially for commercials, they'll send you out a script and usually it'll say, 
um, here's the script, and it'll give you a breakdown. Like if there's more than one person, it'll tell you this is the you know male or female and the age, and then a little bit about the character what they think about the character, and then they'll give you the the script itself. Um, I've done commercials where it's all me auditioning. I've done commercials where you're literally auditioning for one line out of like 20 people talking individually. Um, sometimes you get commercials like that and you audition for 10 of the people that are talking and they're each individual auditions that you send out. So it just depends on the actual commercial itself. But usually they are sending you the actual script. The only time that I've seen somebody not use the actual script in audition is sometimes for anime. If we do auditions and we don't have the scripts for like the simul dub yet, then the director or the writer will just write something that sounds in character so that they have something for the actor to audition off of. But usually for anything else, you're getting like the actual script. That's why usually when they email you a, an audition for a commercial, they'll say, do not spread this around. You know, like, do not share this with anybody because we will find you and we'll probably never let you work in our town again. So yeah, it's kind of tricky, but yeah, you always get the real script. I know, woo, compete with them. And there was a question back here. Somebody else have a question? Read over it so you're comfortable with it, and then just read it aloud. 
Um, and then I'll go through and I'll give you guys some direction, some feedback, and we'll kind of work on it from there. Cool? Yep. What are your names? I'm sorry, what's your name? I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you guys. Let me hand you the mic. Here you go. Uh, yeah, whenever you are. Why do you keep sniffing your fingers? What's that all about? I don't know. It's, it's a habit. A habit? Yeah. But what are you smelling when you sniff them like that? Nothing. There's no scent. Like I said, it's a habit. But, the, but there had to be a reason that this habit started. What caused you to do it over and over again? I never did it over and over again. You must have. That makes things a habit. So what started it? I don't know. I don't remember. You're telling me you just keep sniffing your fingers for no good reason? Maybe it's me sniffing my fingers is a mystery we're better off not knowing about. <laughs> You're crazy, you know that, right? <laughs> That's a good first read through. Very, very nice. Oh, you can handle it. I, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, here's the direction I'm going to give you. Ready? I want you to get frustrated, right? The first time it's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, let's say you guys have been hanging out all night. You went to the bar, you went to the movies, and all night long, all this mofo has been doing is that. <laughs> oh, yeah. right? And maybe you're at the point now where you're like, dude, like, come on. So I want you to get a little perturbed in the beginning. Now, this mofo is gonna keep doing it. So the more he does it, the more I want you to get pissed off. What is something that pisses you off, Matt? Well, let's just say if uh, someone called me a bad name. Okay, so let's pretend instead of him sniffing his fingers, he's calling me a bad name. Every time. Fair enough. Every time he sniffs his fingers. You're a bad name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it and work for granted. <laughs> and then I loved what you did. I thought that was awesome. What I would love to do is go even more apathetic. Right. I don't know, get off my case, man. Like, we've been hanging out all day. Whatever, if I'm gonna snip my fingers, I'm gonna snip my fingers. <laughs> and I'd love to see how that plays out between the two of you. All right. So, yeah, bad name. He's a bad man, calling bad names. Fair Dude, enough. get off my back. <laughs> Let's see what that does. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. I can totally do that. You ready? Action! Why do you keep sniffing your fingers? What's that about? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a habit. A habit? Yeah. But well, why are you smelling like when you sniff them like that? Nothing. There's no scent. Like I said, it's just a habit. But there has to be a reason and this habit started. What caused you to do it over and over again? I never did it over and over again. Bad word, bad word. You must have. That makes you, it makes it a habit. So what started it? No, I don't know. You're telling me hey, you just keep sniffing your fingers for no good reason? Maybe me sniffing my fingers is a reason. It's a mystery we're better off not knowing about. So bad. You're crazy! You know that, right? Awesome! Do you feel that? You start getting like, Monica, stop talking in my ear! <laughs> See, that's good, because that meant that all of a sudden you're like, you're crazy, and I believed you. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And great job. Are you? You're not an actor? Does that I am. I was going to say, you better be an actor. Yeah. Good job, man. Good Thank job. You. Good job. Excellent job. You guys are oh, both fantastic. Good job, I actually man. did a little camera acting as well. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. But see how you guys, like, all of a sudden, when, and then you could tell too that what happened with his scene partner is when he started getting more amped, then he's like, oh crap, okay, you're gonna bring it on? Well, I'm gonna bring it on too. So I love that you guys did that. Good job. Thank Good you. Job. Nice build. All right, let's see. For this one, I need, oh, that's, that's one. I need to, or, I need to organize my stuff, y'all. That's what I need to do. All right, I need two more people. Anybody else? You haven't done anything. Come on up. And then you you had your hand up first, and then I'll get to you on the next one. Cool. All right. Come on. Yeah. Cool. Hi. All right. So Marlon and Hannah. What are your real names? Oh, real names. Yeah. What is your real name? Uh, my nickname is Pipples. Pipples. I like it. Pipples. You will play Hannah. 
and Dante. Dante, you will be Marlon. Okay. So if you guys want to take a moment to read over it and then just read it aloud so that our audience knows what's going on. Just do one, two, three. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Marlon's Tavern. Just to set the scene for you guys, this is a scene um, where uh, Marlon is going to profess something to Hannah. It's not what you think. Hopefully. Alright, so we start now? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> There's something you should know about me. Okay. Um, should I be scared? It all depends on how you want to view what I'm about to tell you. You know how there are tons of movies and novels about monsters, vampires, and zombies? Yeah. Some of these stories are real. You're making me nervous. I'm sorry. You're in any danger, okay? When I tell you this, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not, and I can prove it to you. Would you just tell me already? You're making me worry. Just know that I will never lie to you. You're safe with me. I'm freaking out because I never told anyone this before. What is it? I'm a Morrison. <laughs> it's a weird, you know, it's not exactly what you expected at an anime con, right? <laughs> I mean, why not? That's the, <laughs> That's the weirdest thing I've been told. Right? <laughs> I can imagine, especially in an anime con. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I really like what you guys did. I love this kind of, like, sassy thing you've got going on. Like, gosh, just tell me, right? Like, what? What are you doing? And that was what was so natural. That was her first instinct was just, ugh, what? <laughs> okay, now you're freaking me out. Like, tell me. So I like that. I'd go even further with it. Like, really get frustrated with him. Like, just Spill it, dude. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Now, with you, here's the thing. Have you ever had a secret that really just ate at your inside so hard that you couldn't tell anybody? This one knows. Okay, well, you don't have to tell us. You don't. In fact, it's better if you don't. But whatever that secret is that you refuse to share with anyone, I want this to be about that secret. I want you to pretend that you are telling Piffles here that secret, right? So this is gonna be hard for you, I would imagine. Unless it's a happy secret. Is it a happy secret? It's more funny, isn't it? It's a little bit of both. Okay, so I want you to be, I want you to think about the things that maybe aren't as happy about that secret. You know, because like being immortal is a good thing, right? We think, oh, you get yeah. to live forever, but there's also a lot of crap that comes with it too, right? Oh, yeah. All your friends are gonna die, all of it. You know, like it's a pretty pretty crappy situation. So I want you to think, maybe weigh the two. Maybe there are points of it where you are a little happier about it, or maybe there's points where you're really upset about it. But I'd like to see you really, really kind of like, this music is so distracting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, make it, make it, make it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I want you to really, really ruminate on it. Cool? Okay. All right, let's try it again and see what happens. All right, let's try it again. There's something you should know about me. Okay. Um, should I be scared? It all depends on how you want to view what I'm about to tell you. You know where there are tons of movies and novels about monsters, <laughs> vampires, and zombies? Yeah. Some of those stories are real. You're making me nervous. I'm sorry. You aren't in danger, okay? When I tell you this, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not, and I can prove it to you. Would you just tell me already? She you're crazy. She you're making me worry. Just, just, just know that I will never lie to you. You're safe with me. I'm only freaking out because I never told anyone this before. What is it? I'm awesome. Yay! I felt that. I felt that pain. I really like it. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to do is, I know we only have like five seconds. Let me see the, the script really quick. I'd like to take just yeah, the, the you, let's take like the first four, and I'd like you to laugh through your lines a little bit. Like you oh. totally are just over this dude. Like maybe this is a really <laughs> lame date. You're like, <laughs> okay, whatever. I, just to see what it would sound okay. like. And I would love you to, let's say Piffles is the girl of your dreams. Like you okay. just met her and you were ready to marry her. <laughs> so I want you to react in that way like, oh God, okay, whatever. But I want you to convince her that this secret is worth telling her because you're gonna spend the rest of your life with her. Does that make sense? Okay. This is a really weird direction, but we're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> There's something you should know about me. Okay. Uh, should I be scared? Well, it all depends on how you want to view what I'm about to tell you. 
You know how there are tons of movies and novels about monsters, vampires, and zombies? Yeah. Some of those stories are real. Uh, you're making me nervous? I'm, I'm sorry. You aren't in danger, okay? Well, when I tell you this, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm not, and I can totally prove it to you. Would you just tell me already? You're making me worry. Just know that I would never lie to you. You're, you're safe with me. I'm freaking out because I never told anyone this before. What is it? Well, the truth is, I'm immortal. So here's the thing. That was awesome. I got goosebumps from you guys. Because here's the thing, you had two totally different scenes going on. Do you see how more, much more interesting that was? Because she's like, I'm out, dude, whatever. And I totally believed you. That was the most believable performance you gave just then. Whatever that directing was, whatever went on in your head, I believe that. I, I felt bad for you. I was like, oh, he's immortal, that poor man. <laughs> so whatever you did there. But do you guys feel it? Thank you guys so much. You are awesome. Let's get those everybody in. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, we are about in time. I'm so sorry I missed you, but next time. Um, but you, you guys get a feel for what's going on here? That it's all about what you're feeling on the inside and that you don't necessarily have to be thinking what's in the script in order for those emotions to come out and be a reality. I wish that I could just take all the information I have in my head and take it out and like plug it like a little zip drive into your head and be like, download it. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's not the case, but this is the first time that I've worked with scripts like this. This has been really, really fun. I hope you guys had a good time. Is this something you would do again? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, and if I don't see you uh, tomorrow, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. This has been awesome and you're all one of the sweethearts. And please, you guys should go home. You need to go out there and act because I'm very impressed with what I saw tonight. All these people are like, I'm not an actor. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Y'all impressed the heck out of me.